welcome back. Uh, so, last class we defined some important concepts, right? we defined sigma algebra of events and we define measures in general and we also define probability measures as special cases of measures. right? Uh, so, the sigma algebra uh, of events uh, essentially consists of those uh, certain subsets which are closed under complementation, countable union and countable intersections right? and, and it must contain the null set. Right? And elements of the sigma algebra, as is elements of the sigma algebra f, are known as events, right? And then, uh, once you have the sigma algebra, we defined measures on this measurable space omega f, and we said measures satisfy two properties. One is that the measure of the null set must be zero. The second is that countable additivity of measures, right? If you have disjoint sets in f. And count so the measure of the countable union must be equal to sum of the individual measures. Now and then uh, we we also said that the measure is a probability measure if the measure of omega itself is one, right? So probability measures have three properties: p of null set is equal to zero, p of omega equal to one, and they satisfy and probability measures satisfy countable additivity of disjoint uh, events, all right? Okay, today we will derive uh, using uh, these three axioms of probability that I just mentioned. We will derive some fundamental properties of probability measures. Okay. So the first property. So here, so as usual, omega f p is a probability space, and all probability space. Satisfy the following properties. All probability measures follow, satisfy the following properties. P of a complement is equal to one minus P of a all right for all events probability of a complement is 1 minus probability of a okay how does this follow how do you prove this you have to use only the axioms remember a and a complement are disjoint right 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 a union a complement is omega right so uh, pro omega is equal to uh, a union a complement so probability of omega is, is equal to 1 is equal to probability of a complement union a probability of a com y because countable additivity of see the thing is there is okay let me just put down uh, just to make this clear so there is also um, this is the simplest property uh, this generalizes to what is known as finite additivity okay it's actually fairly trivial if you have countable additivity it's very trivially follows that you have a finite additivity so if if a1 a2 dot 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 a n are events then and disjoint suppose they are disjoint then probability of union uh, i equals 1 through n a i is equal to sum over probability of a i i equals 1 through n okay so actually this is a special case of this isn't it right so you have uh, only a and a complement and it so happens that a union a complement is omega right so if you apply this property 
uh, you will get this very trivially right I put this down first because it is so simple but actually is a special case of uh, it this follows from this which is finite uh, additivity of probability measures. Now, how do you how do you prove this we know that probability measures are countably additive right, but you have to prove now that they are finitely additive it is actually quite trivial, but you have to do it properly right. Huh, so, after a n you choose all those events as null sets ok. So, then you will have union. So, after all these guys you there are there are only null sets right. So, you can prove that uh, union i equal to 1 to infinity a i is equal to union i equal to 1 to n a i because a n plus 1 a n plus 2 they are all null sets. And then what do you do here on the right on the right hand side. Uh, so, you will have sum over i equal to 1 to infinity uh, probability of a i. So, the first n terms are whatever they are, but after that you will have probability of null set is 0 right, but now there is a problem. So, you are so essentially what you have here after this is right the, the ghost term so to speak is uh, i equals n plus 1 to infinity probability of null right that is what is on the if, if you I mean. So, I guess what I am saying is if you have i equal to 1 to infinity union here and you put uh, n plus a n plus 1 onwards as infinity uh, as null sets you have this remaining. Now, how do you prove that this is 0 you are summing an infinite number of zeros, right. So, after all ok. So, after all what is the summation defined as the summation is defined as limit m tending to infinity i equals n plus 1 to m of whatever it is right, but all these finite summations are 0. So, limit of the sequence which is 0 always is 0 right. So, this should be written as a limit. So, in order to do it properly do it fully rigorously you have to write this out as a limit then prove it. Okay, so, you should not get confused saying oh this is infinity this is 0. So, 0 times infinity I do not know what to do right that is not right. So, you have to do it carefully. So, I mean so let me get rid of this. So, this is the actual result I just spoke out how you prove this right. I suggest you actually write it down for uh, your own clarity ok. So, these two are very easy right it is just finite additivity and disjointness. Any questions? Okay. So, if you have two events a and b both uh, in the sigma algebra and if one of them is contained in the other then the probability of a is less than or equal to the probability of b ok. How do you prove that S seems perfectly reasonable right. Ah, right. So, you can write B as uh, A union B minus A correct. Uh, now, A and B minus A are this joint. So, you can use finite additivity right. 
So, you can use finite additivity to write probability of B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus A, right. Now, this is non negative, why? Probabilities are non negative, right? They go from 0 to 1. So, that guy is non negative. So, you have that this is bigger than or equal to that. Yeah, so we, you know, we already said that probability is a map from f to 0 1, right? Cl closed interval 0 1, right? So, the it only takes values in the range 0 and 1, right? So, that is a part of the axiom, right? So, this is non negative and therefore, we have it. A and B belong to the sigma algebra. You will prove it in your homework, all right? After all, what is, I mean, come to think of it, what is B minus A, right? It is B intersection, A complement. So, there you have it, right? Any questions? So, these are very simple properties. And the related property, the probability of again all this, I am not going to write this again and again, okay. So, uh, maybe once I will write it A is an F, B is an F, uh, then probability of A union B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. Okay. So, this is saying that probability of A union B, you, you can add the two probabilities and subtract the probability of the intersection. And of course, A intersection B is also an element of F, right. How do you prove this? Yeah, you just do it. Okay, it's fairly simple. Just try and do it as an exercise. Okay, proof exercise. It's fairly simple, right? To write out. Uh, I think you would be essentially you are overcounting a intersection b, right? So you have to have to subtract that out. Proof is an exercise. So a generalization. So more generally. If a one, a two dot dot dot, a n uh, belong to F, then probability of union i equals one through n a i is equal to sum over probability of a i minus sum over i less than j probability of a i intersection a j plus sum over i less than j less than k probability of a i intersection a j k a k my dot 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 minus 1 to the minus 1 to the n minus 1, n or n minus 1, n minus 1 I think, to the n minus 1 probability of intersection So, this generalizes to more events, right. So, what we are talking about now is, see when you had uh, when you had disjoint events, of course, we said that probability of A union B is probability of A plus probability of B. Now, we are saying that if they are not necessarily disjoint, then the union you have to take out some 
you are over if you just add their probabilities you are over counting. So, you took out the intersection b. Uh, so, here this is similar. So, you are adding all the probabilities taking out all the pairwise intersections now then you take out too much. So, you add back three way intersections and so on right. So, this uh, rule is called the in inclusion exclusion rule right it has a name inclusion exclusion rule or inclusion exclusion formula because you keep including more is excluding some right. So, if you had probability of A union B union C you will have some of the three probabilities subtract 3 choose 2 <coughs> intersection terms and add the three way intersections right. So, that is how you would do it. How will you prove something like this? Induction, Induction right because it is a statement on the natural numbers right this is this is for any n right this is only a finite number of events right. So, you proved it you proved it for the case n equal to 2 by elementary methods assume that this is true for n is equal to k right and then prove it for k plus 1 right. So, it is fairly easy to prove by induction using induction on n, but it is not a pretty proof it is some ugly proof right you have to write out the induction induction hypothesis the basic uh, base case is easy uh, n equal to 2 you have it write out the base case for k and you know you have to work through all the algebra to prove this right it is just messy. Uh, there is a uh, much simpler proof using indicator random variables which we will study much later ok. This is this is how you should prove it now ok to appreciate how much easier it is, it is to prove it using the the method we will study halfway down the course ok. So, far ok. So, these are all very elementary properties of probability measures uh, as you more most of you know this already right this is all stuff you have seen I think. Ah, ok. So, I so this I put down some four pro pro properties uh, the remaining ones are more advanced ok. So, these are very simple what are what is going to come is more advanced you have to be slightly uh, careful in proving this.